Shailesh Chirag. I am the CEO of online coaching at Moksha Overseas at Yukon. So in the next 30 minutes, we are going to understand about the license exams, uh, you know, the challenges, what happens in India, and then of course, we'll take a very specific question which you guys have. A uh, first hand insight on how, you know, hundreds and hundreds of students every year apply for residency in America and how they get selected. Over a period of time, they select a specialization, anything to do with US family. You feel free to ask questions. Only rule is that whenever you ask the question, mention your uh, year of medical school, your college of medical school, and then you can post your question, right? Great. So who are we? You know, so Moksh as a team of professionals, we have been helping students secure their residencies for like almost 10 years now. So we have faculties who have been teaching USMLE for many years, like Stephen Doherty, uh, Dr. Mary Rubish, Dr. Piyush Soni, Dr. Deepak Sharma. All of them are stalwarts. You, you know, kind of check out their Facebook page. You realize what kind of fan following they have. And also, uh, you know, they have a rigorous experience of teaching patient-centered learning. Our objective of our USMLE program has been patient-centered learning. Right? What we focus is teaching you USMLE, keeping in mind not just the exam, but a real-life patient. How do you deal with it? That's what our master faculties you know, de you know, teach you. All right? Great. So now, I open the floor for any questions which you guys have. So you can just type in your question followed by your year of medical school and your medical school name. All right. Just flash that so that uh, we can then begin the session. So Monica's question is that now the exam will become pass and a fail. Then how does that impact the overall uh, US family preparation? Right. For that, again, Monica, I would want you to refer the first page of this brochure so that you realize a couple of things very, very clearly, Monica. Doing a PG in US is like doing a job. You are on a work visa. You get paid salary. There is no tuition fee to do PG in America. Your admissions are based on your college performance, your USMLE marks, your CV, and residency intern so you see each of these factors play a role again within us family you have step one you have two ck two cs you know, these are examinations you know step one is online ck is online two cs is a practical exam and step three which is an online exam are you getting it so yes these exams are there which you guys have to appear for right and prepare accordingly all right Great. So the question which uh, you know Monica has asked that how does the step one pass and a fail impact the admissions? Well, it is not impacting the overall admission. Uh, the only thing which is changing is the parameter the basis on which the admissions you will be securing. Okay, let me quickly uh, let you know what is uh, you know the impact. Okay, so as you can see, uh, you know. These are the factors normally, you know, on the basis of which a candidate gets an interview and finally gets an admission in America. Okay. Now these parameters and the weightage will change. The topmost parameter was step one marks. But now once the exam becomes pass and a fail, this 94% will change to 100%. But only thing they will be worried is whether you cleared the attempt uh, step one in first attempt or not. So even the failed exam attempt, this will become 100% now. Everybody would want you to pass step one exam in the first attempt. And which is why they will expect you to prepare really well. Okay, so the first impact is passing step one in first attempt. That is a very, very important thing. Second is a letter of recommendation in a speciality. Now, how do you get this LOR or letter of recommendations when you go to US and do something called this clinical rotation or US clinical experience? So the importance will increase to do your clinical rotation from the good hospitals. 
not some shady private clinics okay private clinics unfortunately if you apply through any agencies they offer you private clinic we don't recommend that we recommend you to go to a proper hospital okay so clinical rotation importance will increase importance of lor will increase right then your college performance okay that is one of the factor step 2 marks earlier only 80% weightage was given now this will become almost 100% everybody would want to know what is your step 2 scores so even your step 2 scores will become very very important okay earlier they were important now all the more important personal statement what is your life story you know grades in your particular specialization if i want to do let's say medicine then what are my grades in medicine your class ranking your commitment to speciality so if i say i am interested in let's say pediatrics then what kind of cmes conferences i am attending in pediatrics and of course the personal prior knowledge of applicant so your interpersonal skills you know your professionalism and ethics all play a role so again i am repeating for img nothing changes in terms of the competition the competition remains the same the chances remain the same only thing is the way they will take admission the parameter and the weightage of parameter has changed that is what is the change all right i hope uh, you are able to understand this so yes i am waiting for the next question you know so again this is a webinar where i am going to deal with questions as long as there are questions we will continue this webinar all right this is a very very specific webinar where we are talking about no you know usmle examinations and also we are announcing our course we are you know successfully we have done the first batch of high yield review program which started in the month of uh february the admissions were as early as november last year and now we are currently accepting admissions only up to a limited number of seats for our july batch so our july program is on uh the admissions are already done for maximum we have a limited seat intake so those who are interested to learn step 1 live with the stalwart faculties you are welcome to you know join the high yield review series all right so these are the faculties who teach on the step 1 live review program you know so the schedule is simple 27 july onwards every day monday to friday 7:30 to 10 pm that's how the training works and all of these faculties will teach you live online so we just had a session by dr steven doherty uh, on this uh, saturday we will have a session with uh, dr philip tisdal now this is happening uh, on the coming saturday it is called as the step 1 integrated cases all right so i look forward for you guys to participate in these sessions absolutely so good question nikhil what is clerkships clerkships means clinical rotation right and clinical rotation is something uh, which you do during your internship year okay so the question is that what is clinical rotation can you apply on your own absolutely you know we advise students to first apply on their own only so that is what is recommended unfortunately there are a lot of agencies and especially in hyderabad companies too desperate enough you know moment you approach them they'll be like you know okay let me you know just send your application will apply i don't recommend that because that i they are trying to make money out of you you know and we don't do that we are career planners so we do not do that you know irrespective uh, you know 70 year old company 80 year we don't do those kind of things okay so those who want to know about rotation can come on this website understand everything application everything is there on this website you don't have to you know uh, join somebody or give ev everything to a third party problem third party is they give you private clinic rotations which does not have value now as you can see uh, you will find the list of hospitals where you can apply with step 1 without step 1 so you have like the mount sinai with cornell fiu harvard stanford which you can apply but you will require for that okay at the same time if you are doing it uh, you know with your step one mark okay get free rotation you don't even have to pay tuition fees unfortunately these fees will not tell you 
don't do that we first recommend you that you should go for free rotations and which is why all our students prepare for us family right from first year so that by internship year they will have at least step one score in hand and the step one score in hand you can go for free rotations okay and the best part of free rotations is like for example here you can say harvard you pay five thousand dollars florida twenty seven hundred dollars cornell twenty five hundred dollars if you not have your step one marks but let's say if you have your step one marks you can do it all the way free you know and also there are very good institutions which offer this program okay so for example mayo clinic cleveland clinic so the right time to go for rotation is internship year okay and best part is when you go there you're going to do it for free why pay money to agencies do it yourself and apply to the top hospitals okay rather than depending on third party and you know unfortunately let me tell you a reality out of 100 students approaching third party okay there are a lot of desperate companies 70 percent of them land you in private clinic only 30 percent have a genuine hospital types okay so be very very careful on this part you know moment you hear somebody telling you okay yeah send your application tomorrow i will help you or today i will help you understand he is trying to make money out of it you know? so be very very careful i as a you know career planner with moksh we are very clear first go for these free options only if you do not get admissions here then you should think about you know uh, applying uh, with any assistance all right great i hope nikhil that is uh, answering your question by the way which year you are in nikhil because that's important so you are already in internship right yeah, absolutely in which case nikhil i would suggest you to give step one because any which way is just for your information nikhil right now all the universities have put up on their website that they are not accepting any application before january of 2021 so this year you should just focus uh, you know give your step one examinations if you require our step because we have our high yield program which you can be part of if you want to experience our free trial nikhil uh, you know we will just show you our MOOCs, uh, youtube coaching channel plus we will give you access to our free trial as well you know, so you can experience how we train you okay? and utilize your 2020 for your step one preparation okay and then come back to us if you require any help later on you know for clinical but right now you need to focus and clear your step one we have an artificial intelligence based software in which we give you access to live online sections you, know, so you can be in any part of the world uh, we give you access to this live online lecture. You can click on it. You can watch the lecture. You can watch recordings. You know, in terms of content, we start with very basics. We are of an assumption that you know, a lot of times students are not able to solve US assembly style questions because they, uh, you know, uh, fumble with the medical terminologies. So we start with very very basics just to ensure that you have a complete idea. Okay. So, you know, you can watch the recording, you can download notes, you can report mistakes, you can, you know, ask doubts, everything is possible. So this software tool will be with you. Okay, in which you can log in, you can practice. Uh, you can click on QBank, practice on QBanks. You can, you know, create your own questions. In fact, those who want to give a mock USMLE examination, you can do that. Just log in on the MOOC platform and you can, you know, get your free USMLE MOOC, mock examinations, all right? So feel free to experience that as well. And, uh, you know, once you are able to do that, watch our YouTube channel as well, right? In which uh, you will be able to experience a lot of content. Just give, allow me a couple of minutes. I think there's some issue the net. Uh, so uh, you guys are not able to see the screen all right it's taking time until then i'll pick up some next question all right does it matter for bring a scholarship a fellowship program scores do not matter for fellowship programs all right but the overall profile matters if you want to apply for step you know fellowships you need to give your step one 
you need to give your 2CK, you need to give your 2CS, uh, you need to give your step 3, and also you need to give a lot of recommendation from American physicians, right? Uh, these are quintessential requirements. You also require a letter of recommendation from project guide on which you have done your PG. So while scores do not matter, profile does matter for fellowship. Okay. So I mean a lot of consultants at the age of you know 40, 45 preparing with us. You know, in our last program, amongst 200 students, there are about 35 consultants, you know, uh, at the age of 35, 45, 90, you know, these ages is when they were preparing for USM. Because a lot of USM is more of a career decision. It's not just about uh, you know some examination because once you decide to give exams you can actually move to a new country and settle there you know so there are people who have own operations in india they want to wind up and start a new life or a new lifestyle in us you know that's how it works great so for those who want to watch lectures on this website feel free to type in things which are there earlier all right this is the website where you can type in things you can watch a lot of lectures on this YouTube channel. Specifically, I will record you all of you, you know, to to understand what's our philosophy. Watch this session because this is something which we focus on patient centered learning. Right. So now coming back to the part of it, you can see on this platform you are able to you know, watch your predictive scores, your recent activity, your overall performance. So all of you, those who want to experience this Moksh, you know, online platform, you are free to, you know, just log in on moksh16.com, uh, click on free trial and you can be able to watch the free trial, right? You go on moksh16.com, you go on USMLE coaching and you go on free trial here. Once you click on free trial, use this link, uh, you can get uh, access to our online content for free plus you get access to uh, usmle style exam as well so when you can log in and experience you know the usmle examination style mock all right great so very interesting question i have from and then there are a few more questions so what is the best time to answer step one i am in second year now now, in order to understand that, Joan, let me quickly, you know, take the portion of step one. Okay, if you are in second year, first of all, uh, Joan, please understand, unlike NEET PG, USMLE is divided. Okay, so step one has only first two years of MBBS portion. Step two CK has the final year portion. So ideally, what our students do, is they prepare for step one in first two years and appear in third year prepare for this in final year and appear in internship year it's pretty logical it is not need pg that you have to give it only in internship here it is divided and expectations are also divided so while you are studying anat biochem physio in your medical school understand application of these subjects in your assembly and which is why if you approach any top medical school in India, uh, you name a college and you will realize that every student, you know, is in the first and second. In fact, now, even in first year, people have started preparing for USM. All right. So it is highly, highly important for each one of you to understand this. So make sure that all of you, you know, stay focused and prepare for step one right from first year okay because minimum time required for preparation for step one is two years if you are in your medical school if you are in internship or graduate then you will take one year for step one and one year for step two. that's how it works and i would suggest i would suggest uh, since you mentioned that you are in second year you need to watch few videos that gives you a complete clarity okay? why to start preparation of USMLE from the first year of high school our international faculties from the US they have 
stressed about it because what we are doing in india some opportunities just because your senior is doing a wrong thing you cannot follow the trend you need to change the trend so that you realize why it is important to start early just so that you are aware uh, you know let me also highlight something very very important factors for you okay just so that you are aware okay please understand since you are in second year let me highlight you few more important things okay since you are in second year you will be the student who will be also appearing the next examination okay it is high highly highly important for anybody who is in india and in post second year you guys will have to give the next examination right because that's the policy earlier students who are studying mbbs outside india had to give this exit examination okay while indian student only used to give neat pg now both both have to give this common exam called as next so getting a medical school admission in india does not guarantee you to become a doctor if you want to become a doctor you will have to pass this next examination and what is next and while there was already a need why government decide to bring a new exam the reason is as per the new competency based curriculum cover you know the indian mci is trying to start the you know set the global standards and they are trying to adapt the global exam and the best exam to be compared globally in terms of preparation of usmle is uh, in terms of preparation uh, you know for medicine is usmle which is why next is trying to you know act or try you know be towards usmle style and which is why it is all the more important that every indian student who is in first second and third year should immediately start preparing for usmle step 1 because otherwise passing next will not be easy your seniors managed it because uh, neat pg was all about ratifying memorizing next is not like that next will require conceptual knowledge just like usmle and if you don't do that welcome to the reality what is happening with students who go abroad and appear the fmg examination just for your information every year students who go abroad and then come back you know and give this uh, license examination in india out of 100 students only 20 are actually becoming doctor okay the percentage are always low for a license examination next is a license examination so unless you are you know wide awake and realize that i will not get a degree i will not become a doctor if i don't prepare from first year it will be too late and the log logic is very very simple you know if you see the structure as well of the usmle examination okay? i will quickly show you what are these subjects these are step 1 usmle portion which typically you will learn in year 1 year 2 and some part in year 3 and that's when you appear the step 1 of usmle okay then of course as you move forward you need to remember this knowledge because ultimately you have to appear the next examination also and application of all the basic medical science subjects like i need to know my anatomy so that i can do well in surgery and i to i need to revise it every year earlier ask your seniors you know moment they were in third year they used to forget all the first year subjects moment they were in fourth year they'll forget all the second year now it will not work like that you need to know clinical foundation because if your physio patho and pharmac is weak you will really do very bad in medicine okay and medicine and surgery are the foundation of your entire career of mbbs so if you want to pass the next examination if you want to call yourself a doctor uh, just you know be wide awake and realize the fact that i need to prepare for usmle style examination i need to prepare for step 1 immediately without wasting even a single day because if i don't understand concepts and i will rely on whatever i was memorizing so far you are ready for the doom day because mind you now you have next exam it is no longer neat pg so unless you are preparing from first year it's going to be very difficult all right i hope you are able to understand this and accordingly you need to work on this 
Joan. Right? Okay, now Nikhil has one question. Uh, let me answer that question for him. Can we move abroad, US or Germany or Canada or Australia without exam after PG as a specialization? No, you cannot. Just so that you have a complete clarity. You cannot go to any country without exam. Unfortunately, you have chosen medical course. You have not choose an MBA or an IT program. This is a very serious course. Human lives are involved. So far, India was not asking any exams. Now even India will be asking for exam. Okay. So two things happen. One is an Indian student can do a PG. And second is an Indian student can settle abroad. So if you want to settle abroad or you want to do PG, that is something which you need to decide whether you want to settle or you want to do the PG. Now, in order to do PG, Indian students have three countries. One, of course, is India. Second is USA in terms of number of chances and number of seats. And third is Germany. Now, Germany is a one way route because German degrees are not recognized in India. So if you go to do PG in Germany, you have to settle in Austria, Switzerland or Germany. That's it. Only these three countries you can settle. If you do a PG from India, you cannot settle in America because Indian PG is not recognized. You have to do fellowship and come back. But let's say if you have a PG from India or America, and you are ready to give exams. So if you appear for Canadian license exam called as Mackey, you can settle in Canada. If you are ready to appear the Australian Medical Council exam, you can settle in Australia. You can settle in New Zealand. You can settle in a lot of Middle East countries. You know, Saudi license exams, Dubai health authority exams, uh, you know, Abu Dhabi examination. So Middle East also you can settle. But you have to give exam. There is no escape to exam. If you have an Indian PG with exams, you can settle in these countries. But if you want to do PG, you cannot go directly in Canada and do PG because they don't have seats. You cannot go to Australia. You cannot go to New Zealand. Okay. And as you can see in both the pictures, I have not mentioned about UK. Again, in South India, a lot of companies are fooling Indian students that you will get a PG seat in UK. That is completely incorrect information. UK is the last option. It doesn't even come in the PG list. It doesn't even come in settle abroad list because they do not allow Indian students. Last 10 years, 8 to 10 times, PLAB exam was shut. Thousands of thousands of students have spent you know, hundreds of crores of rupees in preparing for the exam, but their visas were rejected for the PLAB practical examination. Okay, PLAB 1, PLAB 2 clear, their visa was rejected to when they got the admission for PG. And I know of students personally who got opportunity to do PG in UK. They could not settle for six years. They were looking for a job, didn't get a front end job. They were given back office job. So that's why we strongly do not recommend UK. You can just Google and you will realize what are the problems in the UK healthcare system. So yes, the question if I have a PG from India, what can I do? You can settle in any of these countries. Okay, not in US, but in Canada, Australia, New Zealand, Middle East. But you still have to give the exam. Canada has its own exam, Australia has its own exam. There is no escape to exams. Yeah, absolutely. Rahil, if you are already a PG from your home country, you can apply for fellowships as well. However, you know, you need to check certain, you know, provinces in Canada accept all your USMLE scores and give you exceptions on one exam, like qualify exam one and qualify exam two. So one of the exam they give you exempt and certain provinces allow you if you have done all the USMLE exam, you don't have to appear for Canadian examination. All right. So it depends on which province are you applying to and which fellowship program are you applying? To. All right. So it all depends on the fellowship program and the province where you're applying. To. Australia proves if you are East FMG certified, they already have guidelines. They give exemptions under the specialized pathway. It is very hard to get a surgery seat in US. Absolutely. But it is not impossible. Okay? Impossible should not be the correct description. Okay? There are 8,000 seats for medicine. 
2,000 seats for pediatrics, 2,500 seats for surgery, okay, around 1,000 seats for radiology, anesthesiology. So, yes, because they have more seats, 70% of seats are in medicine and 30% seats in surgical fields. Surgical, surgical fields are competitive. But somebody telling you it's impossible, that's a very wrong information, right? That is not something which you should agree upon. I will show you with the data so that you just have a clarity. Let me open the data because it's important that you are aware of this information very clearly, right? Let me show you what happened in the admission season of 2020. So in the 2020 admission cycle, I'll just show you how many students apply and how many got selected. So there is no quota system in the US, all right? So as you can see there, in physiology, there were 1370 seats, 58 green card holder got admission, 78 non-green card holder got admission. Family medicine, 4,000 seats, 787 green card holder got admission, 405 normal people got admission. Please focus on our green card because that's where uh, we IMG is international medical. So you'll be able to see it is in there are 8,697 seats out of which 1100 IMG got admission and our green card holders and 2116 uh, non US IMGs got admission, right? Yeah, so medicine 8697, 1123, 2116. Then medicine, 1100, 1900, 100, Neurologist 682, 56, 182. All right, pathologist 600, 54, 232. Pediatrics 2864, 222, 340. Psychiatry 1858, 164. And as you can see, surgery 2500, 200, and about 240 people got. So there is no quota system. Okay? People do get admission. It's just that there are more medicine seats and less surgical seats. That's the only thing. Any country you decide to go, you have to, you have to give the license examination, okay? You cannot settle there without having the license and PG from the home country, okay? So let me quickly answer your question. Let me pull up one particular slide for you, okay? so that you have a complete clarity let me pull up this slide for you so that uh, there is a clarity which you have if you have done pg in india doesn't matter but you have to repeat the pg in us because indian pg degree is not recognized please understand this so it's a very very simple chart but it's important for you guys to understand. So it's very simple, as you can see. Anybody who wants to settle in America have to have a degree plus pass step one CK CS examinations. Get yourself ECFMG certified. Then you do PG from America. And then once you pass the final year of PG and a step three exam, you get a license to work in America. Okay. If you want to study further, you do fellowships. Okay. Now, if you have a PG from India, first of all, please understand this. You have to repeat step one CKCS and step three exam. There is no escaping exams. Now, after you've done these exams, you have two options. Either you can go, you know, directly join a PG program again or you first do the super pg for example if you are in md medicine you can first apply for fellowships in different specialization right and if you do well that's okay if not you can go come back all right because it's very simple your indian pg degree is not recognized in us well i can comment about america i cannot comment about india okay champ is asking what extra should i do uh, for surgery, all right? So please understand that irrespective of the specialization, you need to have a very strong CV, okay? So it's not about 
that I, I have to do few things for surgery and I don't have to do things for medicine. That's very incorrect notion. Irrespective of the specialization, you require all of these things. So it's your step one marks, CK marks, CS marks, your US clinical experience. So if I want to become a surgeon, I will have to do rotations in surgery. I should get letter of recommendation from American surgeons. MSPE, medical school performance, specialty focus work. So if I'm interested in surgery, I need to prove that. So any CMEs, conferences conducted by my med school, anywhere in my city or my country, any surgery suture workshops, anything to display my art. Because surgery is an art. Okay, so that is something which you need to work about volunteer work so work which you do with your community medicine department or any international medical communities you know which work into volunteer uh, opportunities extracurricular so beyond medicine what all things are you interested in you need to kind of prove that as well because they want a all-rounded profile right research is important finally the language spanish is the most spoken language so it is recommended that you know Spanish language if you are interested to apply for the US Army, right? And last is of course the interview. So admissions are based on all of these factors. Again, what I mentioned in start that doing a PG is like doing a job there. So every factor is equally important. I hope this answers the question, but that was a good question, right? Absolutely, yes. Ishtasham, you cannot, you can practice in any of the Middle East countries. I just mentioned, you know, these countries have their own examinations. So again, uh, let me repeat it once for all. If I have a PG from India, I can settle in Canada, Australia, New Zealand, or Middle East country only with exams. If I have PG from India, I want to settle in America, I have to repeat the PG. Okay? Simple. But if I have a PG from US, I can settle in Canada, Australia, New Zealand, any country, you know, and India without any exams. That's the difference. All right. Correct. Any other questions anybody has pertaining to USMLE? Anything to do with USMLE? Feel free to ask, all right? So, you know, with us, students start very early, you know, right from their first year of med school, they start called as the foundation of medical science. Then from second year onwards, they start the advanced clinical science. We help with clinical rotations. We help with uh, residency matching. So it's the overall service what we provide. It's not just about the examinations, all right? It's the overall service what we provide. I hope this is clear. Okay. That's a lie. You should have data. You know, we, whatever you hear say, it's a lie. And unfortunately, people who, who, whom you speak to are people who are sitting in India. Okay, Monica? not the people who are successfully working in american healthcare system so i'm afraid uh, you know you i mean if you have to believe you can believe that's your choice but reality is it's all your say okay it is all your say if you want to understand exactly correct you are hearing from people who are in india and believe me that is what is happening that is why i'm showing you this data 15,000 Indian students think about USMLE and prepare for USMLE, but only 1,000 move ahead. Why? Because like you, many, many, many students fall to false rumors, you know, that, okay, something or other things are happening and, you know, things are over. Or they are not motivated. They don't understand that paying crores of rupee to, you know, an Indian private college is not a great career decision. At average age at which... A uh, Indian physician who does his PG and super PG and settles in India and calls himself like, you know, uh, making money is at 32 years. 
wherein the same MBBS students of India, if he decides to settle in a US and prepare for US family and starts his PG in America, he starts earning from 27 years. So five years of your life you are saying, right? So please understand this. It's, it's not your fault, okay? So please do, and don't go by rumors, go by what is real information. All right, great. So if you guys want to, you know, give a mock US family examination, feel free to type in on this email ID or WhatsApp us on this number and we can give you a mock examination or you can go to our website, register on our website and also can attempt on a mock US family examination, right? Either ways uh, you can do that. I just want to inform you that this year, this today, or this is the year when in the USMLE framework, the only thing you guys can do being in India is prepare for step one, prepare for step two CK, develop your CV. Do not think about clinical rotation and the practical CS examination. That's not going to happen before 2021. So make the use of this lockdown period Prepare well for step one CK examination. Then believe me, anybody telling you these exams are easy are fooling you because these exams require tremendous hard work. All right. And just so that you have a glimpse of it, you know, give a mock exam. Watch our YouTube channel just to realize the kind of depth this exam has because USMLE is all about patient cases. All right. And which is where we as a Indian, uh, you know, medical school students are also moving towards because now that next examination will come in India, it's all the more important that Indian students also start learning the patient centered way. Sai Nikhil, I don't know who is giving you wrong information. Okay. That is correct. Whatever you mentioned that I, after preparing everything, if I don't get the visa, what's the issue? So that is correct in the lab or the UK pathway where the UK government rejects the work visa. So I agree, you should fear if you are thinking about lab, but not in USML, okay? Because you need to understand there are two kinds of visas required in USML. One is a B1, B2 visa, which is a tourist visa, okay? which you require initially, which is like a normal tourist visa required for CS, clinical rotation and interviews. Only this visa you need to be worried about, not the work visa. This work visa, the rejection rate is not even 0.5%. Okay. So again, a misinformation. You don't have to worry about this work visa. Yes, you need to be worried about this tourist visa. Because on tourist visa, you will do your practical CS exam, clinical rotation, and go for your interviews. Okay. So there are two visas in this American process. One is the tourist visa for all of these things before your admission. Once you get admission, the work visa, work visa, not to worry. Only tourist visa is what you have to worry about. Exactly. I am not recommending lab at all. Okay. Ritesh Sharma, that's correct. That is why I don't recommend PLAB at all. American system is far more better than the UK system. It's in fact, we can't even compare. There is no comparison whatsoever. This is the reality. That's where Indian students are settling in US. Internal medicine, pediatrician, surgeons, family medicine, neurology. That is the split. Okay. And if I were to tell you the reality of what happens in UK, let me give you that reality check also. Okay. There is an association called the British Association of Physicians of Indian Origin. They have, you know, pointed out the issues in the UK healthcare system. Okay. They clearly, you know, this is again, you can Google and you'll find so many articles published by them. In fact, there is a, a physician who is from Andhra Pradesh. He has written a article in a research journal on kind of racism which is happening in the UK healthcare system. So you are correct. 
dr sharma that uh, uk is not a destination us is the destination okay very few high doctors at a high position in uk wherein in america you can google yourself you will realize how many physicians are program directors how many physicians are at top level in the us system non white doctors are treated unfairly when promotions are given in uk specializations like cardiology ophthalmology surgery pediatric not given and we just saw the data for us how many students have got maximum students have got these admission awful bunking conditions i mean you, you can just open your facebook connect or settled in america you realize uh, and that their lifestyle and the difference all right so yes uk is not what i recommend because of the visa issues and all other issues but us absolutely no problem whatsoever maybe then you are ill informed dr sharma because i have thousands of students who are settled in us who might interact with him very regularly all right us has no such problem and i don't just speak on hearsay i speak on data so just for your information dr sharma you know this year itself 4000 international student got admission right this is an official data 2020 passing data right great so it's about you know that's what i say in india the problem is about the story which you've heard spanish crab and italian crab you know it the crab story people they themselves don't try uh, you know they get lazy but they demotivate people around them no no it's not possible no no it's not going to happen and i know thousands of such cases in the same class same batchmate you know one person is you know trying to pay his loans for private college in india crores or rupee loan but he was much more talented but his friend was okay in studies but worked hard towards your family settled another completely different lifestyle so it's all about you know your perspective if you feel no uh, you know things are bad there so don't try you know uh, fight the system in india but if you feel you have the courage you have the hard work capabilities you want to you know not get entangled in the uh, you know web of quota and all those stuff then yes uh, you know us is a system because it has been a transparent system in terms of admitting students there is no quota whatsoever in the american admission procedure okay it only happens in india in fact all the british colonies so uk who started and taught us quota australia new zealand all the commonwealth nations canada itself in fact i can show you data for canada as well across canada there is a quota of only 50 seats for medicine only 5 seats for surgery right so that's how it works no juan uh, your my coaching for usmle will help you for next exams not for university exams if you are a medical student in india unfortunately the college exams are too theoretical usmle is about practical application every question of usmle is a, a an mcq which deals with a patient case so yes usmle will help you do well in your conceptual understanding you know for that you always watch our online coaching platform watch the videos watch the question bank you know you, once you in fact start watching these lectures realize you can download notes you can ask queries and a lot of things will be much more clearer all right as we go move ahead in this journey but yes there is a difference between the med school teaching and what is expected and because again you know i always say to my students when you think or start preparing for us family doesn't matter you are in first year second year third year start wearing your white robe start wearing the stethoscope start thinking yourself as a physician because if your perspective is not of a doctor and your perspective is only about answering questions and not treating a patient uh, medicine learning is not going to be fun but if you were to learn as a licensed you know physician or you know if you were to learn keeping in mind to treat the patients things will be different and that is what we focus on all right and that is what we expect all of you to do all right 
i hope this answers your question well all right thank you very much everyone i wish you all the very best and i hope to see you soon in uh, the next us assembly session thank you very much